South Korea, you started to make your way up? We went up in what is called the uh, Pusan Express, and it's an old steam engine, and uh, the car is all close together, and uh, uh, small, small seats built for Orientals, and I'm over six feet. train was surrounded by uh, Korean kids, and they were all always saying, Shushan Joe, Shushan Joe, 25 cents a pack of cigarettes, and so forth. We felt quite sorry for them, and uh, we gave them what we had. The train started to pull out, and the little kids put the rocks to the train. <laughs> and and they were some of the rocks were coming through the through the window and so we were ducking down as they uh, as they as the train pulled out so now we're on the route up the hill 187 it's now a an established position for the South Korean Army, same locations as you guys chose. We'll be able to get a clear view of uh, the old no man's land, which is still the no man's land, right. the Chinese positions, everything yeah. except now it's North Koreans. Yeah. So much I, hasn't uh, changed. I, I hope I recognize it because I, I was over all of it and all over all of the valleys. I, sp I, I think I spent most of last night thinking about dead people. So Terry, do you recognize this place? Uh, what I recognize quite well or impressed with uh, just looking at it is the, the hills, the Chinese hills in the foreground, how they fold up and higher and higher and they get darker and darker as they go into the, into the background. I always thought it was quite foreboding. Chinese hills were right across the valley and I always thought they were three, uh, three or four hundred yards from the, uh, from the front uh, from the from the sharp end positions where uh, where not, where uh, Charlie Company was, we'd be in the front line anywhere from uh, thirty days to uh, to two months. Uh, on Hill 27 here, I was on here for I think 58 days. Uh, there was there was no civilization up here, and there was. Uh, person lived on his uh, on his wits and his reputation there was a natural leadership that uh, that took over up here the most dominant thing was the was the fear of the chinese and the second thing almost as bad was 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 the was the cold and it dominated everybody's uh, existence and uh, there was always a when well, you got a wind here now there was always a cold wind coming from the north and uh, it cut through and you couldn't put your parkas up because you couldn't hear the shells coming in sitting in your slit trenches uh, here and in other positions too uh, they would have a, uh, a loudspeaker would come from across the valley over there and somewhere back of 166 and uh, it would uh, start off with very sentimental music it would be American music or Canadian music and very very sentimental and it would be always a woman's voice uh, uh, singing to you it always hurts to say goodbye Why do we try to hide the pain in our hearts? They always called us Americans and say they would start off American, 
American officer, American soldier. This is not your war. You should go home now. Why are you fighting over here and uh, suffering like this uh, when uh, a rich capitalist is having turkey dinner with your wife? Uh, and uh, you'd get that for a couple of hours, and then uh, after a while the uh, uh, artillery would start to fire salvos over there, and, the, and then it would stop. At midnight, we'd uh, pick up our, uh, our uh, food, and uh, you'd go one or two at a time because you didn't want people bunching up around it because of shells coming in. The meals consisted of uh, often macaroni or uh, they consisted of uh, uh, cut up turkey. It would be prepared back over the hill in a mess tent. We used to get a quart of beer every night. It ended up that there was more, uh, more beer than, uh, than water and so uh, occasionally uh, people without any water would shave in the beer. Most of the time uh, we would be in our slit trenches uh, uh, looking out across the valley. Uh, but uh, uh, if you're in one of the reserve companies back here, uh, about every third night you'd be on a patrol out in the valley out there. And uh, the valley in front of us here, in front of 166, and down through the wider part of the Samishan. Uh, when we were up here in 187, that's where we did our patrolling. All along the front, in an effort to seize the initiative from the Chinese, UN forces constantly patrol the narrow valleys between the front lines. Every night, men venture into the darkness, probing Chinese positions, never sure where or when the enemy would strike. This is a very typical uh, terrain that you would find on a patrol when you're coming down into the valley uh, in towards the rice paddies. Getting ready for a patrol, we would uh, start sometime in the late afternoon. You, uh, put uh, camouflage paint or blackening on your running shoes. You put it on your face and you put it on the backs of your hands. Uh, after dark, uh, we uh, proceeded out towards the valley. We would come down through the minefield gap. Patrol probably would uh, walk along a paddy bun like this, so they would have the protection of the paddy bun. And if something happened, you'd all go down on, on one knee, and the the uh, lieutenant would look out this way and to his front, and the second man, which would be myself, we'd look out to the front and this way, and the shotgun guard, who was also carrying a sten gun, that was just a term for him, shotgun guard, he'd be behind here covering the rear. We would wait a while and listen and be very, very patient because we knew the Chinese were very, very patient. And we would uh, eventually uh, move, but move very, very cautiously. The purpose of patrolling is you didn't want the Chinese to control the valley because if they could control the valley, then they could control what they wanted to do in the, in, in the positions. You don't fire on them. If, if at all possible, because if you fire on them, uh, they can pinpoint your uh, your weapons firing. We never saw them. We heard them. They were like phantoms. On a reconnaissance patrol, I was the uh, I was the radio operator. I had a 300 set. 
Some of the men didn't mind patrolling. Some some feared it very much and uh, didn't want to leave the train.